So we've come to the end of this series. Since last time, I've updated uh, the PCB with the final improvements, you know, connecting the can of PS2 uh, uh, connector to ground, changing a trace that I needed to change, optimizing other traces, making some improvements to, to the silk screen, markings of the board, all kinds of little things that since I was making another board as well, basically I only had to change really one, one thing, one trace. But since I had to make another, I decided to make improvements, uh, general improvements everywhere to have a good feeling that the project was well concluded. So that's what you see me doing now, all these little details to the board. And with the miracle of uh, video editing, here's the final board that I received from the manufacturers. Again, excellent quality, uh, very fast uh, manufacturing. I'm very pleased with the board. It's a modern board with tiny pads. That's something to pay attention to if you are assembling your own servers. You will get one chance to solder this right. You have to use relatively little solder um, and it's pr practically impossible to desolder anything from this board because of the large ground and VCC planes uh, in the middle layer. They, they, they work like major heat sinks. But the board is looking great. So now on to populating the board and again with the miracle of video editing. <laughs> That's the final result. I added a couple of extra micro ATX uh, holes that are not in the standard but I realized many of the trays assume these extra ro uh, holes to be there so I, I added them. My little dedication to my friend Federico Fajin who is the inventor of the microprocessor uh, at Intel. He deserves a load of credits, not only for that, but for what he has been doing over the past 10, 20 years, his work uh, in the area of foundations of physics and, uh, and philosophy of mind. Uh, he should be a lot better known for that work as well. So that's the final servers running its stress test applications again. The result looks good. It doesn't only work <laughs> fine, it looks good too. But the question now is how much power does it consume? What is the current drain? So I, I hooked it up to my uh, lab, um, my bench power supply, running a stress test application at the full 8 megahertz, and there you see the result. The current consumption, consumption is only 330 milliamps. Of course, we need a power supply uh, rated above that because of the current surge when you turn it on and you're loading all the capacitances, capacitances in the circuit, but only 330 30 milliamps at maximum activity is pretty good. And so we've come to the end of the series, the end of the journey. I mean, I've been doing this almost every weekend and many evenings for the past uh, seven months. Uh, I'm very happy <laughs> with the result. Here it is. Here is Cerberus uh, in all its glory. Um, it is very satisfying to see it to see it working, uh, to know that uh, the project was a success. Uh, at the same time, it's a little bit anticlimactic to to finish it, uh, to come to an end. Uh, and of course, an end is also a beginning. I will be working uh, this summer on uh, the Attic Witch, which is a sort of a modern clone of the XD Sorcerer 1, hopefully binary compatible with the XD. A computer that I think has been uh, neglected by the vast majority of people with an interest in classic 8-bit computers. Uh, fantastic architecture, very well done, uh, very efficient. Um, and I want to sort of resurrect that in my own way by building a more cost-effective a modern clone because to buy an original one today you would be paying I paid for mine $850 for a, a defective uh, um, uh, machine uh, with an unknown defect I mean luckily it was just a shorter tantalum <laughs> capacitor uh, it was not a big deal I had to convert it to European 230 volts and 50 Hertz but that was not too big of a problem uh, but most people would not have access to a machine like that so I want to build a modern clone for under $100, binary compatible, and not with emulation, not with an FPGA 3.3 volts, no, a real 5 volt through hole machine running the actual uh, uh, kernel uh, of the XD Sorcerer. So that's one of the next projects. Uh, I also am planning a new series similar to, to Pimp My 8, 
but instead of pimping, uh, I will basically be exploring and restoring, more conserving than restoring, actually, uh, classic late 70s, very early 80s, prof more professional machines, so less the you know, cheap mass market plastic based machines from the 80s, some earlier ones. Um, I just wrote a post on my revamped uh, website, uh, thebiteattic.com. Uh, describing uh, this new series in more detail. And of course, in the meantime, I will be enjoying <laughs> our new friend Cerberus. And hopefully the community uh, will be writing some software for it, some development software like uh, uh, an emulator, assemblers, compilers and all that. Uh, Andy Toon is already doing that, so check out his site. There is a link uh, to the emulator from my own site. Um, check that out. Uh, and hopefully at some point I will be able to produce some bonus episodes uh, in this series, in this playlist, uh, showing what people have done with it. So fingers crossed uh, that that uh, will happen. So in the meantime, thanks, thanks very much for joining me in this adventure, in this sort of trip back to my, to, to my childhood to realize uh, uh, an old forsaken uh, childhood dream which is now real. I'm holding my childhood dream <laughs> in my hands. Uh, and you have you have been uh, on this path with me and for that I'm very grateful. So take care and I will see you for the next series. Ta-da!